Welcome to another episode of Real Estate Beast with me, Michel Kmiotek. Real Estate Beast is dedicated to taming the real estate market and becoming the king of the jungle. And we do so by handling some subjects every single week and this time it's all about market value. Now cap rates, estimates require uh, knowledge of the NOI, so net operating income and market value of properties that have recently been sold. So the formula in essence is CR is NOI divided by MV, which is market value. They are the inverse of the PE ratio in stocks. So current price of a stock divided by the forward earnings per share. That's all great and good and in essence very technical. And that's where basically the economists have their debates. And in my opinion, it's always about what has happened in the past and trying to find rules and regulations that fit whatever happened in the past. However, real estate is not an exact science. So the issue is market value rests on previously and recently sold similar properties, which first of all are never similar. Each property is unique. A house can differ slightly or tremendously from its neighbors, right? Uh, even an apartment on a first floor, let's say, is not 100% identical to an apartment with the exact same layout on the second floor. Not to mention that once a buyer has made his acquisition of a similar property to ours, this buyer is no longer on the market looking endlessly to purchase the similar property over and over again to infinity. So once a buyer has bought, that buyer is gone. So we cannot always say that market value rests all the time on what has previously been sold. A new buyer with similar interest and requirements has to be found to purchase our property. Now, there's a very interesting book which specifically cuts into this topic written by Manny M. Moya, if I'm not mistaken. It's called Real Estate Evaluation Theory. Now, uh, Moya uh, holds a PhD and is a professor of property studies at the University of Cape Town. And in his book, he cuts deep into the fallacy of property evaluation theory as it is applied uh, basically all around the world today. I wouldn't necessarily recommend reading his book unless you are deeply entrenched in real estate theory. So I will give you just the gist of his findings. Now, Munya doesn't give a, a better answer as to how market value or property estimation should be done by real estate professionals, but gives a better understanding of how estimates can lead buyers, sellers, and even whole economies to a meltdown as we have seen it in 2008. So as the financial crisis was about to uh, unleash its full fury, right? Home appraisers in the US were still estimating properties at similar valuations month after month, even though the market was clearly starting to move in a different direction. Property were no longer selling, whatever the price was and whatever the appraiser found that the price should have been. So one could simply assume that these appraisers had to inflate valuation due to pressures felt from aggressive mortgage companies or general competition between appraisers, right? You don't want to give a bad appraiser and not have anyone come back to you for business. So in other words, would a home appraiser willingly evaluate a property for a lower price, risking that his clients might not want to hire his or her services in the future simply because they prefer to hire an appraiser which estimates properties at a higher price point than its competitors. Food for thought. But this isn't where Moya puts the blame. According to Moya, appraising rests on results from the past being used for expected results in the future. If there are 20 homes sold in the vicinity of our home and we look forward to estimate what a buyer will pay in the future for our home, we need to consider that there is an issue with appraising a home if there were no homes sold in the recent past meaning that 20 homes are still listed but haven't sold. In this case, would the seller consider listing his home for less than his neighbors? Hmm. Ego usually gets the better of us and we list our property for a similar price. There's no way I'm gonna sell for less than my neighbor, right? Now let's assume that our property is located in a market where only one similar home has been sold in the last three years. In this case, the applied evaluation method has no reliable data to base its pricing on. In this scenario, any price is plausible. Any price could be applied 
but none can be fairly nor objectively justified. The issue is that appraisers, real estate agencies, governments, and institutional investors as well use automated valuation models or AVMs. Now these AVMs are just simple mathematical models which together with appropriate computer software and databases of property information, again, which rests on the past, are used to provide real estate valuations. So when a client needs an appraisal to estimate the market value of a given property, the person sitting behind the desk will simply type in the property's data. We could think of things like square meters, number of bedrooms, uh, construction year, commercial surface, location, and so on. And then the program will use market data to spit out a price range. Notice how I said price range, because as I said in my previous podcast, Price is never a given in real estate. It's not like the stock market where price is visible to all the players at all time. We do not know exactly what price is, so it will always be a price range. So using this approach will surely give a fair value, but it doesn't necessarily look at market trends, cycles, or even the interior and the design of a given property. In other words, AVMs are made to make the jobs of appraisers and bankers much easier, but they are not a given. The data that they spit out is not absolute and is not at all times justifiable, nor validated by the market. There are certain markets where the data is more readily available to the public. For instance, in the US, you go on Zillow and you can pretty much get any kind of pricing on your neighbor's properties, what has been sold recently, which properties have been sitting on the market too long, what was their history, so have they gone up in price, have they been rented out, have they been uh, going down on price, everything is fairly known. Unfortunately, for certain countries, like the ones in the European Union, we have the protection of uh, data. It means that all personal data is protected and that also involves the data about housing. We have no clue what exactly was paid for the neighboring house that was recently sold and it's only the notaries that might know this information and that the information then goes to the government. The government compiles a data sheet which is still very vague and we could base some AVMs on them but it's very difficult to know the exact price as you can imagine. So back to market value. Sometimes it can be very easily known, like for you guys in the US, for those who live in Europe, much more difficult. But then there's another thing to consider, that market value can shift in a single day, from maybe 10K to 100K downwards. A good example for this is Bucharest, so the capital of Romania. So specifically in the center of Bucharest, we find buildings which are categorized and labeled by a seismic risk. This is all due to a 1977 earthquake which shattered many, many buildings in the center of Bucharest and at least 1,500 people lost their lives during that disaster. Consequently, the government decided that buildings should be labeled with a seismic risk. So how likely is the building to crumble and shatter when a next earthquake will hit? This then protects, so to speak, any buyers to know what they are buying into and to know that there might be some severe renovation and structural works to be foreseen in the future in order to get it to a better seismic risk category. In other words, let's go into an example. I would want to buy an apartment in Bucharest. I want to put it up for rent mostly because I want to make a good purchase. I want to haggle on price, but then I see seismic risk has not yet been applied on this property. I then wonder what happens once the seismic risk is evaluated. And it could be that from one day to the next, whoever does the appraisal of the seismic risk will say, hey, this is a risk one, this is a risk two, so one is more likely to happen than the other. Uh, You guys now have lost, clearly, on each apartment, at least 10 to 20K, depending on the size of the apartment. So this is a very specific example where market value can be up one day, 
and down the next day and you might not even be able to sell it at all because the risk is just too high. Investors will flock to properties which do not have the seismic risk, leaving you sitting there with an apartment that you can have used or even worse, you cannot get a bank loan for because the banks think it's too risky. Maybe renters will stay away. Of course, the absolute worst thing that could happen is that an earthquake pops up and your building or the apartment where the building sits in is completely shattered. Maybe it gets even worse than that. You put in renters with children and those people are no longer alive. That would not be something that I want you to have on your conscience. So to sum it all up, market value. It is a tool that we as humans need to use in order to estimate and evaluate property. But what I'm trying to say here is that it's not always a given. This is not an exact science of calculating how far a star is away. This is all based on what the past has told us. But never forget that real estate is tied to economics. Economics are not an exact science and they go through cycles. They go up, they go down. Whatever happens, make sure that you are aware of what the best possible approach can be to estimate market value on the property that you're considering. That is it for this week. This was Real Estate Beast where we try to tame the real estate market and become the king of the jungle. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think in the comment section and hopefully we'll see each other in the next episode.